everybody. My name is Jin. What's going on? Um, yeah, I've it's it's been like ten plus years since I've kind of been doing this and you know signing to a label and I guess you could say entering into the music industry. And that's one thing. Even ten plus years later, I'm still struggling with, which is that whole concept of being the first. Chinese rapper on a label because technically I don't know how historically sound that is because I've never actually dug into like the archives of all record labels of all time and said okay well they never signed a Chinese person okay well they never signed a so I don't know how accurate that is I think if anything it says a lot about when I did get signed and propelled into the public stratosphere that made for a good story and apparently that story just has been perpetuated all the way till now so I mean is it is it is it a cool title to have I guess yes and no. I mean, yes, because it is very honoring and, and humbling and encouraging. But at the same time, do I want to be defined as just the first Chinese rapper on a label? I mean, because, yeah, it's like it's uh, along with a lot of other things that I've experienced. There's a gift and a curse aspect to it. But I mean, I'm not going to like say, don't you dare call me that first Chinese rapper that got signed, you know. But um, it's just one of those things. Um, so. I feel like as much as it did open doors, it may have closed some too. Same thing, meaning a matter of perception. Is there a uniqueness to it? Absolutely. But if you ask me genuinely, do I think I got signed to, like, I got signed to a label called Rough Riders? Do I think I got signed purely because I was Chinese? I would say absolutely not. Because if that was the case, they could just go to Chinatown and find, you know, or any Chinatown in the world or anywhere where there's Chinese people, just find a kid. But um, do I feel like it played a factor in them signing me? Yeah, to a certain degree. Um, but... I wouldn't weigh it in either way more than the other, you know? So did it have a factor? Yes. But is it the sole factor? Not at all. Um, I would like to think that, you know, my performance on, you know, the, the, the rap competition on, on BET, stuff like that would be a factor too, you know? So, and then even going beyond just signing to a record label, just everything that happened after that in the same way. If you were to say, do you think being Chinese has helped you more or set you back more? I think equally as much both. And what, what I mean by that is, did it raise a lot more awareness for me? Yeah, you know, like like I just said, every article that I did from Rolling Stone to Vibe Magazine to popping up on ESPN, without a doubt, there's a reference to, okay, so you are the first Chinese rapper. Look at how you just started this interview, right? So in that sense, yeah, it does have a kind of like a umph to it. But the, the setbacks, I guess, would be certain preconceived notions. Like the one that pops into my mind the most is the expect. The, ex the expectation level is raised like infinitely because uh, one thing that I remember and you know people would just say is like I've encountered it in rap battles and I think it was the general perception is that yo that's so groundbreaking being a Chinese rapper and aren't there like five gazillion people in China if even just one out of every thousand bought your album you'd be like the biggest thing ever right so that wasn't necessarily helpful <laughs> in hip hop so. oh man I was just having this conversation with Phil earlier today um, without a doubt the first one that comes to mind is LL Cool J because uh, I, I vividly remember he would be the he would be the first guy that I would actually emulate looking in the mirror with the mic, you know, a comb, pretending as a mic, spitting all his lyrics out. So LL without a doubt. Uh, I have never met LL. Good question. Never met him. Um, and then later on, as I really started getting into the craft, emceeing, rapping, uh, without a doubt, guys like Nas, right? Nas, um, Eminem, certainly. Um, Wu-Tang Clan as a whole. Like uh, the hip hop scene in Hong Kong is a very peculiar and unique element or 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 or, or atmosphere. Um, I don't want to say there isn't one, but I can't say there's a thriving one either. Is it thriving? I guess you could call it thriving. Um, there are young people out there that love hip hop. They love the culture, but it's just so small that it hasn't been enough to where it can push it into the forefront mainstream in that sense. Okay, the present right now, uh, I think 2013 is a very transitional year for me. So I'm spending a lot more time in the States, uh, just kind of touching on various projects. One specific thing would be music, and uh, I have a new album on the way called Hypocrite. That's the name of the album. Um, the only thing I can say at this point is it's without a doubt an album like none of the other ones I've ever recorded in any way, both sonically, content-wise, just across the board. It's like a, a gin that nobody's ever heard before. I, am th I, I just stepped into my 30s. I mean, I'm 30 now. Uh, fatherhood, 
marriage, and and I think the core, most important thing, my faith. You know, my faith has been kind of the core uh, in the last, I would say, two years have been real crucial uh, in a great way. Just in terms of dictating the direction that I take on everything, on how I handle my personal life, how I handle my music, my career, interviews, everything. It, it literally dictates everything. But in a good way, though, when I say dictate, I don't mean like, you know, I, not like, yeah, like I'm, 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 I'm forced or conformed, but meaning like just using my faith and how I need to and should carry myself relating to all these things has been amazing. It was really an honor to be invited to perform. This is my first time at South by Southwest, so just to clarify that. So being that it's my first time here and I get to be a part of it is pretty intense. Like, it's pretty overwhelming. Uh, I think what I'm looking forward to would be, number one, obviously, rocking at the, at the showcase tomorrow, specifically at the uh, Kingdom Experience uh, venue, because I know that even specifically with, you know, like, like a platform like that, they're not just going to invite anybody to come up. And it's not even about... Yo, are you popping? Are you known? Are you not known? It's more about like, what are you gonna bring to the table, and and what we do we believe in what you're doing, and for them to actually, they they took the initiative to reach out to me, so that was very encouraging in a great way. Um, message, X, 2024. That's my message. My life is worth nothing if I don't use it to accomplish, you know what God has put me here to do, and that is to spread the good news, and that is the good news of Jesus Christ. That's my message. Acts 2024. 20,